good day. It's about that time for a late June tour of the garden. And this time I am gonna include the front yard because I keep forgetting. So this is an overview of my front yard. I have a lot of shared grass with my semi-detached neighbor. And I do have plans, you know, maybe to do an alternate. Um, our grass is lovely though, so. <laughs> It, it's like it, it would be a lot it would be way more work actually to put in a perennial bed than to just keep it grass with just maintenance of um the only thing I do to keep it maintained is uh add fertilizer like twice a year so in the spring and in the fall and it pretty much stays lush right it, grass is a weed and it spreads very easily and the only thing it needs is water and fertilizer and it, it suffocates the weeds so it's actually kind of easier to maintain <laughs> although it does take a lot of water but we have a lot of water here in um, Ottawa Ontario Canada we get so much water in the spring and in this month even that it, it's it only dries out kind of in mid-August and so I don't know I don't know what's worth it but I would prefer to have um, some sort of you know less formal more of a natural bed of sedums or something like that. Like just different colored sedums. Anyways, okay, so this front here is me attempting to start <laughs> something here. And uh, I'd made it a little formal with four bobo hydrangeas. And um, the, the two here on the end, and even a little bit of this one had a lot of dieback over the winter, but it was his first year and um, it's competing with water from this maple tree here so i don't know i think it'll they'll they'll be fine though and then i have some heucras that uh, really need the shade of the hydrangeas um, because they are getting a little scorched by the sun but once these hydrangeas become like four feet round it'll help with that i think or if they're still small and scorched because again I, I started with tiny tiny little plantings of these caramel heucra. Um, if they're still like this in, a, in a, like next year, then I might say, okay, the heucra is, is just too much sun in the afternoon here for heucras and I would change it out. Here's some hen and chicks. There's one that's about to bloom. Another one there. And I just shoved some seed maker there because uh, there was just so much rainwater that would drag all the dirt down into the driveway and I just needed something to stop it real quick and the the grass wasn't growing fast enough and we all know that seed maker is practically invasive so I just put that there temporarily I know that it's something that I probably need to keep an eye on and control so it doesn't go into the grass um, oh there's another one. Oh, it's a twin I've never had hens and chicks bloom for me, so I'm kind of excited to see what that looks like. Um, here against the foundation, <laughs> we have um, really big limelight hydrangeas that I'm going to have to start pruning properly, like a third down every year because it's already reaching the top and it's only what, it's second summer? Gosh. Uh, and I also have the same look, right, of the Caramel and Rio Heucheras. And up top here, I put in some coleus, some begonias. And I did have a different trailing white flowering plant here, but I forgot that it was, uh, it needed full sun and it doesn't get full sun here, it only gets morning sun, it's the morning right now. And then it gets afternoon shade. So I took some pansies that I found down here that wintered over and I just shoved them in there like yesterday <laughs> so they're looking a little sad but they might perk up um I don't know what these coleus are called because they're just like a mix or I just can't remember but I did have a video where I planted them so I might have named them I think that looks really pretty accents with the brick you know because I find that sometimes when I put like a hot pink here or something, it really clashes. I don't like it. So I, I stick with these colors for the front yard. It's just, I don't know. It's just what I do. So yeah, there are no buds on them yet. Wait, are there? 
No, nothing yet. But the Bobos, they have buds on them. Because they flower earlier. And this one um, is, is more, is doing so much better than the other one. More prolific? I don't know. <laughs> that last one. So yeah, that's the front. And uh, now I'll walk you to the back. Oh, a little cocoa bean waiting. All right. Carport. Loving the carport. It saves so much. Like, the bins don't get too wet from the rain. I get to store my lounger. I get to store my bike. It's so convenient. So here's the walkway. I've got two hydrangeas climbing up the wall here. I got a moonlight, one that's already in bloom. I mean, it's really, really spectacular, but it's not growing very fast, let me tell you. Whereas this one, which is Pink Sensation, climbing hydrangea is just growing like weed, but not blooming at all. Have to look into that, don't know what's going on. Uh, it gets the same amount of sun, which is like barely any. Then we have some cucaras, carnival watermelon, we have pretty in pink pulmonaria. We have banana bay um, pasta. We have a Godzilla Japanese painted fern. We have first frost hosta. We have a wild berry heuchera and a blue spruce sedum that I don't let flower because I really just want this color. The flower just basically looks like this. And obviously this um, yellow flowering <clears throat> sedum is called sedum acre and it's slightly invasive in my area but it's so shallow rooted that it would just be a pain if it got mixed up with grass which is totally doing over here. But if your grass is healthy, I'm, I no, I'm gonna monitor this. I'm thinking, my guess is if my grass is healthy enough it will compete. Um, well enough but if it's not healthy enough <laughs> or rather if the sedum acre starts to overtake my grass that's a problem and I hear that this does happen so then I'm actually a little nervous about it I'm gonna monitor this because I do love the look let me turn around I do love it but then there's this section here that merges into grass so I'll just keep my eye on it on this side over here so remember this side was my veggie garden but I don't want it to be a veggie garden anymore I don't love that it's so empty in the spring until I put veggies in and I also don't like having to walk in there to harvest the veggies it's a bit awkward I do walk on this um creeping phlox here once it's done blooming I can just step on it like a carpet that's not so bad so here I have Autumn Joy Sedum. It was just like a volunteer that I planted there. I have some strawberries that have finished or almost finished, but the squirrels or something, slugs, I don't know, gets them. So I barely, I barely get any after all. So I'm not sure this is worth it either, but I, it, it's pretty much just rocks under here. So it's growing in the rocks and I don't, I mean, it's high enough that I think I like it. <laughs> I just bought this new Sunseeker, nope, not Sunseeker, a double scoop strawberry deluxe echinacea. And I somehow dug into the, <laughs> into this area here where it's like, again, there's lots of rocks under there, but it should be okay. Um, this clematis is doing really well. Satsuku clematis. I love that. It's on old wood it blooms on, so I don't prune it. And it's only its second year, so not bad, eh? Down here, I have, I just moved it here and I had to cut off all the tops, so it's trying to regrow and bloom. It's gonna be a very tall, spiky Veronica Speedwell that is kind of a purpley blue. I've got some Prima Angelina that I have stepped on 
to plant these new plants. Um, I got a chunk off of my other one of Dianthus, and this one is hot pink. Oh, this is like a peach sorbet or peach cobbler or peach something. Cucura, again, lost the tag of a lot of cucuras, so. Wait, I think actually, peach, peach flambe, and I, I, I wrote it into the um, Pinterest. I have a Pinterest board with all of my plants that I try to remember, because I know the tags go missing, right? Right here, I have a delphinium red lark that was struggling in its original location, so I planted it here to have give it more room and more sun. It's being smothered. And I did the same thing to two other ones. The delphiniums, I don't know. They're just, they've been tricky for me this year. I got some lupins, some of this red one, and then this white one here that already bloomed and then I chopped it off. I got some gray sedum that is very slow, slowly, slowly spreading. I wish it would spread faster. And some basil, some dazzleberry sedum, a practically dying fire alarm heucra. <laughs> I got some pink perfusion salvia that I've been wanting forever. And I also bought another um, Midnight Masquerade Penstemon because they seem to like my garden. And uh, this was at Canadian Tire for cheap and I split it in two and put another one somewhere else. Now here is what a delphinium is supposed to look like. <laughs> so this is brand new this year because um, my delphiniums are on their third and fourth year and they were not thriving this spring and they're being eaten by earwigs a lot and also just not coming back and I was like oh what happened did I you know do we have a weird winter or something like did they get they, the the root rotted or something and sure enough I did some digging and they only have a lifespan of two to three years if, especially if you deadhead them and don't don't let them reseed themselves so I was like oh why didn't I know that before <laughs> I thought, you know, perennial, they'll just keep coming back. But like cucras, if, no, cucras, if you divide them every three years, they'll keep going. There's just like the mother stalk uh, will, will, like the crown will die off and its little offshoots will still live. So you can take the offshoots, put them somewhere else and then, and then it won't kill the plant. This, um, this will die after three seasons unless the seeds fall to the ground and germinate and then come back the following year or two. So it's like, oh, that is different. I don't know if I want to do the upkeep with that. <laughs> I've been deadheading, so that's why I haven't for sure reseeded, but I don't even know if, like they say it's hard for them to reseed in the first place. So this is going to be something I have to really think about. But for now, I still have a few and we'll, I'll nurse them back to health and see what happens. All right, here's another clematis. I don't know what it's called, but it's blue and purple and it blooms on old wood. Wait, old wood? Wait, doesn't that one bloom on? Oh no, that one blooms on old and new wood, sorry. This one's the one that blooms on old wood and it's really, really pretty. I showed it in my like earliest spring video, I think. And then I have down here, I have some volunteer phlox, tall phlox and some nepeta, but it, not, it hasn't, done anything yet because they, they were just like tiny tiny little self-seeded seedlings there this right here this big shrub is actually a starry starry night hibiscus rose mallow it's supposed to have full dark leaves but <laughs> it's totally green and I don't know why maybe it'll darken up the more sun we get because we've had such cloudy weather this is oh, my Jack Frost runaround I just got one of these balloon flowers. How cute is that? Ah, it's a little balloon. Back here I have a climbing rose that is called Sky's Limit, but they're basically done blooming. There's still some, you know, some buds there, but I just meant the flowers that you see. There, it's supposed to be a lot brighter yellow, but you get what you get. Some irises are done back there. Oh, I had the iris borer. And if I didn't have the iris borer, I had some other weird disease. So I took out like more than half of my irises throughout the entire garden, which really sucked. I didn't know to even look for that problem uh, in the spring. So they all just traveled to one another and I'm not too concerned. I got all my irises for free and I didn't even buy a single one. So it's, I just ripped them all out and they were spreading too fast anyways. 
Um, this is a tall flox. I don't know which kind, but I think it's called Laura. I'll know when it blooms. This is a Dolce cherry truffle, and it does really well in the sun. So if you're looking for a heucra that's sun tolerant, yeah, Dolce cherry truffle. I'm going to split it and put it there because that red heucra is not okay in the sun. I've got a fire chief Thuja that isn't very fiery, but I still really like it. This is going to be an echinacea that is going to bloom. Um, Sunseeker salmon is the variety. So it's going to be like salmon pink. Of course, I have the Artemisia in the back and this beautiful um, purpley sand cherry shrub that I just like after it blooms, that's whenever you have to prune it or else you're cutting off the blooms in the fall. So I just pruned it a nicer shape. Then this started blooming. It's the incredible hydrangea. It's doing great. I have not pruned this down. You can prune them all the way down to the base apparently, but I wanted some height for my, to hide the ugly fence. <laughs> then down here, I have some sweet Kate, um, sweet lungwort. Yeah. Sweet Kate lungwort. The contrast, right? That's why I got it. The contrast is really pretty. And also it's a nice chartreuse accent. This is, I think a Rio, like from the front yard and it, would rather more shade because you can see the burn marks but that's okay I'll I'll see how it does this one I have to take out this is just like all curled up and shriveled up from the sun so spotted around boop 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 I have some I think they're called goblin it's pink goblin yeah pink goblin uh, Veronica Speedwell and when these are in bloom the pollinators love it love it love it love it I bought a white one to go throughout, but I don't see any of the white icicles. I think it was called white icicle. Here I got a boulder blue fescue grass with a bunch of seed heads. And here I have a terrible looking um, heuchera. And I mean, the blooms look great. <laughs> so what happened to some of my heucheras? Again, I was too late to notice. I was really busy in late fall. Look at this little bee. What kind of bee is that? It's doing a little butt dance. Look at you, what are you? I gotta look that up. Um, anyways, what I found out, I think, was spider mites. I think spider mites got to them. I was like, I don't know, ignoring them when they look like this. I was like, oh, it must be the sun. But I think it's spider mite damage. I don't know. So now what I'm doing for that is I spray it with insecticidal soap. I also like do this to it a lot. like. Because apparently if you do that every single day, then the spiders can never, you know, form properly on the plant. So there we go. Then I have, oh, I have more heucra here. This is Palace Purple, Boulder Beef Fescue Grass. I don't know the variety. Another wild berry and a Lemon Love heucra. And then what we have layering back is um the penstemon is this purple flower pollinators love this too so we've got some midnight masquerade penstemon and on either side here and here we have some fl tall flocks and um the problem is oh well, this one's starfire because i can see that it's bloomed so now i can write it on the tag and <laughs> write it down because none of my tags worked out over the winter they just all the the sharpie just washed away i don't know which one this one is this is my moon glow juniper which is gonna get really really big in this space and i'll have to move stuff out but that's okay this is where the delphiniums are supposed to go right here but they did uh, like two of them did, out of four didn't come back and so i planted new ones and they're just not thriving you know, there's like a little guy, he's like barely making it. So if I don't want to go the delphinium route, which I love them though. Look at like, oh, look how far you can see it. If I don't go that route, then I'm going to put a vine here, like another clematis or maybe even like that kiwi vine I was wanting to get that has the pink leaves, pinky white leaves. Anyway, this is an endless summer hydrangea, big leaf or macrophylla. 
a variety kind of hydrangea so it blooms on new and old wood but the new wood um, I did not protect properly in the late winter <laughs> I uncovered it too early and so all of the buds dried out and died <laughs> so I have to wait for the new wood to bloom but I mean it's still growing pretty good it's in it's like uh this is its fourth summer I think then my pilu clematis is doing really well love it can I zoom in Mm -mm. there so that's doing okay and you can cut this right down to the ground if you want I haven't but I have trimmed it like halfway a couple times okay that's enough coughing <laughs> um all right so there's some more delphiniums that aren't doing great but they still have tall color that's a peony that I cut back like it's really big in the spring and then I once it's done blooming I hack it all the way back so it can give room for the endless summer hydrangea to bloom to grow uh down here I just moved this dianthus oh my little hat Meh. little it's like the biggest hat ever so this is a pink dianthus I've got more wands behind it Veronica Speedwell this so slow why is our native butterfly bush I guess it's actually because it's a cultivar it's the orange one but this butterfly bush is so slow to start up and I'm like ugh, waiting and waiting Next to it, I just planted, um, I took out another peony and I'm instead putting a Shasta daisy. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if the Shasta daisy is gonna like it. It gets some shade here because of this uh, smoke bush. So we'll see, but I'll, I'll just wait. If, if that doesn't work out, I know that the Artemisia will fill in there and that'll look great. I have some tick seed there that I, I'm shocked survived because its brother that was right next to it did not survive and then the pansies of course uh, oh also interesting to note pansies also have a lifespan of three years and then they're like usually just die off and sure enough this variety I have two varieties this one is in its like this is its like fourth summer and the other one the other variety I had both of them um, that I had throughout the garden they both died this is the only variety that made it on its fourth year so that's good to know. Um, like apparently they can reseed themselves. So don't deadhead. I don't know. Uh, this one, I don't know. It looks like a Rio, but it's also sun damage on it. It's a little faded. Uh, I've got some Minarda. As you can tell, it's gonna be bright pink and this is a short variety. So it doesn't grow tall like the other ones. I have some Hakunakloa grass, some Artemisia that I really need to cut. Okay, so I'm going to take this Artemisia, um, and it's like called Silver Mound. It's that kind. It's supposed to be a rounded mound, but now it is leggy and gross. So I'm going to cut it right down to the base, and then it'll, it'll start to grow out in another two weeks. It'll be a little round mound again, so I'll do that right after this video. Um, this is so cute. I have no idea which variety this is, but it's tiny leaves with veining. Let me see if I have it written down in Oh, my... it's probably the Carnival Watermelon. And then I just took a little piece of it and put it here. I don't know though, it's smaller. Smaller leaf, I mean. Um, this is another Pulmonaria. Mm, leopard. Yeah, it's called Leopard. It's like the first one I got. I got some Rebecca. It's doing this weird thing. Yeah, what's up with that? <laughs> That's not good. It's got a disease. Uh, I have to look this up and find out what is... And crunchy? Oh, no. Okay, this is the first time it's happened. It's the only one it's doing it to. So I'll cut it off and we'll see what happens. Here is, I think, a uh, Lemon Love. Yes. Lemon Love Heucra. This is an Admiral White Tall Phlox. Behind it is a Scarlet Monarda. Be bomb. Oh yeah, behind here I have a brother something iris. It's like a local iris. That's why it looks like grassy leaves. And it's in its like third <laughs> season and it still hasn't bloomed because it hates its life back here without any sun. But I still like all these leaves, so I'm gonna keep it. <laughs> Let's see what happens. And this is a euonymus called Winter Creeper. 
I don't know, something Winter Creeper. Okay, a Bequa Drinking Gourd. This guy here, it's nice and blue-green leaves. It's being smothered by this Cucara, which looks not the best. I am gonna switch it out for the Dolce and put the Dolce Cherry Truffle here instead so the accent colors are a little bit more poppy. Um, that came with the house. I have no idea what kind it is, but I really like the shiny chartreuse green leaves, so I keep it. I do have a ginormous limelight hydrangea here in the corner with some ferns behind it that you can't see, but you can, can see you can, can you can can see them. Oh my goodness, you can see them on the side here and in the spring. You can also see the evening primrose, and they just like peekaboo from underneath and that's where we contain them. There's just so much stuff here that it's holding in the very aggressive evening primrose. Be careful if you get evening primrose. If you don't have a packed garden, it could take over. I have an echinacea here and it's just like the typical local purple echinacea. Behind it, I have that, again, that tall, tall, spiky Veronica Speedwell that is like blue purple, but I had to chop it in half because I moved it well, it was in bloom. Oh yes, what is this called? It heaved out, so I split it in three. Or its mom was like done crowning, and so I had to split it in three. And it's so pretty. I'm gonna get the name. It's called Silver Gumdrop. And it's got a really dark color on the back, but the silvery, silvery purple. And I really love it. Anyways, so the babies are doing fine. This is Jacob's ladder and I just put it here. It was hiding behind a shrub and now I've given it its, given it its spotlight. And it blooms a light blue uh, flower in this early spring. This guy here finished blooming obviously a long time ago. It's an azalea, Northern Lights variety called, uh, I don't know, but it's, it's yellow flowers. Highlights, highlights, Northern Lights, azalea. There you go. Uh, honeysuckle the wild and crazy honeysuckle is almost is basically finished blooming it's on its way out and I have just a couple left here it's supposed to smell but honestly I never smell it I don't know if it's because it's all the way to the back here but the wind is coming from back here so but I don't I don't smell anything and it's aggressive so I have to train it up <laughs> I might have to prune it this year because ah. Uh, there's only so much fence it's gonna reach and I don't want it um, hurting the azalea. So we'll see, but I do like it. See, I can get in here and I can smell it. I smell nothing. It has absolutely no scent. Weird, because it advertised it did. Anyways, I still think, like once it's fully in bloom, it looks pretty, I have some photos on my Instagram. Artemisia, kiss me Kate. No, not kiss me Kate. <laughs> I always do that. I always do it. I'm such a musical person. It's so pretty. Uh, another leopard longwort. A black eye Susan. Oh, did I even say what that was? A Rebecca. Black eye Susan. The one that's wilting. Yeah, anyways. I had one plant and I, I cut it into four. Here's, here's the second one. I have a sedum down here. It's got like a blue tinge to it, but then it blooms pink. I've got the wild berry heucura, another silver mound. I've got this gorgeous, love it so much, shrub. It is a dappled willow. I just pruned it because it was getting wild. I have a lime. I, I like the lime heucura better than the lemon love because these flowers are bright pink, whereas the lemon love are just like, oh, Coco, are just like a faint pink. When they're done, just pop them off like that. Shove it in, oh, shove it in there somewhere. I have some more of that short, although this looks a lot taller. Um, pardon my cerise, I think it's called Monarda. I have a little globe, a little cedar globe there. I have another Hucra that I have no idea what the name is. Another Jack Frost Brennera. Back there I have some 
it's echinacea, it's tall, and it's kind of like a orangey color. Like an, yeah, like a coral color. You hear something, eh, bud? Okay, no more. I'm doing a, I'm doing a movie. This is a nine bark, um, ginger wine nine bark. And the spiders really like it, but that's okay, because spiders don't do damage. This um, weirdly shaped hydrangea is a firelight uh, panicle hydrangea, and it's like got the wonkiest shape. I don't know what, I don't know what. I should have just, I should have taken off down there. Cause look at, there's just, <laughs> what was, I don't know. I did want the height, right? I always want height so I can hide my ugly fence, but it's a bit wonky looking. This is okay. I've got another Japanese painted fern and this, oh, see the other one was damaged. I showed you that all the spider mites got to it, right? Well, this one is not damaged at all. It looks beautiful. It's got gorgeous veining. Love that. It's bright pink. Love it. Oh yeah, some columbine just like spreading everywhere. Oh, I really should, I should probably take off the seed head so it doesn't spread too much. Ooh, no, I can't pinch it. I have to actually get some scissors. This, these hostas flanking the entryway to my <laughs> little shed is um, hmm, not first frost, not jack frost, but autumn frost. <laughs> God, this is why I'm getting so confused with the names of things. Autumn frost hosta. Love it. Oh, this is so pretty. I think this is fire alarm. It's a loving life. No, this isn't fire alarm. I don't know what that is. I've got a mountain boxwood here. I have not shaped it this year yet. I'm going to try to make it a cone, but it just needs more growth before I can do that. I got two astilbes. This one is bridal veil astilbe. And this one is something dark side of the moon, dark side of the moon. I don't know. Why don't I have a tag? But it's a little bit covered. But the spike will come out and the spike will come like right between these two parts and get really big bright purple. So that's cool. A kind of clove grass, Jack Ross Brunnera, more Rebecca. Attacked. This is a lime. And it was attacked by the spider mites, sadly. This is a peach. What did I say last time? Peach cobbler? Or peach flambe? I don't know. And or it's a Rio. Oh gosh, don't don't quote me on these heucurrents. I'm just I've got too many. This is a kapow flocks, tall flocks. It's like really bright neon pink with like a cool tone to it. So I'm like learning to love it because this is a warm tone pink and it's a cool tone pink. It looks a little weird next to each other, but who cares this color? Uh, this is a Monarda. And do, 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 another wild berry, another silver mound. I've got my tall, I limbed it up. I'm turning it into a tree. Yeah, I've decided the service berry is being turned into a tree form with a multi trunk of four, I think. One, two, three, four. Yeah, sorry, the other one's there. So it's got four trunks. There was a, a fifth one there and a sixth one there, and they were really sprawling. And they're kind of like, I just didn't want it. So, because so I got this shrub here. And what is this called? This is a laced up elderberry with his dark leaves. And it will have those pink disc flowers. And then I got the lupin white, and then there's a pink one tucked in there behind this um, pretty and pink pulmonaria. That is so gorgeous in spring. I have, uh, okay. It's the most standard, it's the most common uh, kind of salvia. I think it's like cardamom, cardamom, I don't know, something like that. So the delphiniums here did better than on the other side. Um, and they look real pretty. And now I'm worried that next year they just won't come back be <laughs> because this is their, they're a year behind the other side. So this is what the other side looked like last year. Like it was still doing okay, right? Anyways, I do have to stake each and every one. They're so high maintenance, you guys. 
Is it worth it? Is it? I don't know. I don't know. Let me zoom in. Yeah, so the purple ones were first, then the pink, then these kind of bluey ones, bluey white ones are next. Mm-hmm. So I mean it's the oh the sun, eh? It's bright. This is a ginormous flock. Uh, oh my gosh, it's white and blue. It's so cute, but it's like so prolific. Last year I Chelsea chopped it, honestly, and what is eating it? Okay, sorry, I Chelsea chopped it, and so it was a little bit shorter. This time I was like, ah, it I had to wait so much longer, like three extra weeks just for it to bloom. I just don't like it here because it's blocking the tree. So that tree is a um, yellow ribbon arborvitae. Oh, another little lupin. A blue star juniper ground cover. Oh yeah, I took a piece off of the hosta over there and I put it here. And... What else did I forget? Oh yeah, this little orange hucara here. I've got, this is also orange. It's orange uh, echinacea. I just don't know what kind. I put a loop in there. There's brand new, because the other ones didn't come back, delphiniums. One's pink, one's purple. I've got a little angel nine bark and a brand new pink <laughs> variety of clematis. It's like a warm pink too. So kind of like a, I don't know, like a coral pink, which I love. It's my favorite color in the garden. Uh, this is just Jack Ross Brennera, my usual go-to. The Shasta daisies I moved from, uh, I forget, like here to here. And it was like, I hate you. Shasta, Shasta daisies do not like being moved. And also it got eaten by bugs or something, slugs, I'm not sure. Another delphinium there, trying to survive, I guess. Some of my only irises that I kept. Oh yeah, there is <laughs> this, lilies. There are lilies. <clears throat> like, why do we have lilies back here? There is a lily right there. See, it's about to bloom. Oh, and another one right there. Ugh, I'm, I'm packing it in, eh? Putting too many things, I don't care. Um, so yeah, there's a lily here. They're gonna bloom again that corally pink that I love so much. This is definitely a fire alarm. Okay, they have like the flat leaves that are bright red. That's how I remember that. And this is a lemon love. And I don't know, my sister got those uh, irises. I just love the foliage so much. There's a dark euchre behind it. Some sedums, penstem at the back, some lamian. There's my original Autumn Joy sedum, it's Boulder Blue Fescue, and some of the hens and chicks I got. This ginormous tiger eye sumac, it's growing so big, it's so beautiful, but it does sucker, guys. It's in its third year, it's second year, honestly, it started suckering, because I moved it and I saw how long the tendrils were in one of my videos. I was like, whoa, guys, it's, it's so okay, it doesn't sucker as much as the native staghorn sumac, but it's significant. It can go as far as like five to 10 feet. It gets, it's suckered into my neighbor's yard and they're keeping it as a shrub, but otherwise you can just like mow it down all the suckers or just snap them at the earth level. And that's what I do, but it's like, watch out. <laughs> if you don't maintain, if you're not like always out and watching things, then you could easily get little baby shoots of these everywhere. So, warning. <laughs> then we have um, ivory halo dogwood. It's like the red twig kind. Behind it, ugh, all done flowering except for a couple, but it was my Zephyr and rose and I love it so much. It's doing such a great job. And this, this is its third year and finally it went nuts. In my previous video, you'll see it was just stunning. And I know that next year it will have like two rounds instead of just one round. Like this might have like one or two blossoms throughout the rest of the summer, but I'm hoping that next year it has like two full rounds. So we'll see. Um, around here, I potted up. The, oh, sorry. Someone's doing yard work. I hope you can still, I'm sure you can still hear me. Okay. This is a potted up hydrangea panicle it's called uh, pinky winky <laughs> yeah and then this is where i'm putting 
my <laughs> garden vegetables like I don't want to put them in the in the earth I just want to do potted veggies now so here is um just like a little tomato vining tomato plant here called Candyland and this is a Lebanese cucumber which are my favorite cucumbers to grow okay spinning right around I do have two pots of annuals this is black eyed Susan Vine. Oh, not a great, not a great look there. But anyways, and um, underneath you have some like super tunia minis and some sort of trailing annual that I don't know. And the other pot on the other side is the exact same. I'm gonna spin you around to my favorite view, which is the um, Kidney Island. So in my center island, I have so many lovely things. I have the same nine bark as the back, the um, the wine. Oh my gosh, ginger wine nine bark. And then I have some uh, creeping phlox on either side. It's beautiful in the spring. I have the um, fire alarm heucara, the dianthus here with like a white and red bloom. I have a yellow euonymus. I have some dragon blood sedum, the midnight masquerade penstemon, the uh, lilac, um, but I over trimmed it and so it's, it hasn't bloomed yet again because it's called a bloomerang. So it's supposed to bloom twice, but I really pruned it. It was getting so big in this spot. I had to make it tiny again, like a little tiny little round thing. Um, which I have to do with this guy too. He's getting way too tall. Like I want to cut that off. We'll see. I got my blue spruce globe. Behind it, I have some grass. It's a uh, Japanese blood grass. It's just doing okay. Grass, I don't do well with grasses. I have some Angelina sedum. I have a shadow. Um, this is denim and lace, Russian sage. It's, it's just brand new last fall. So we're gonna have to give it some time, but it'll be bigger than that next year this time, most likely. The fact that it's taking is, I'm happy. Um, some more gray sedum there, older blue fescue that I just moved, so it's struggling. This whole area is struggling, okay? This, this area here, it had a Shasta daisy, um, which is right here. It was eaten alive by, I don't know, everything. And then so were these, these like delphinium cheer blue, I don't know. I bought them because they were look really pretty at the store and now they're just earwig eaten or slug eaten. Or maybe it's the spider mites. I don't know what's doing it, but I think I'm going to have to give up on these. The Shasta daisies will come back. I just have to be more diligent the uh, next year because they just got so damaged. It was really bad. Oh, and there's that uh, sun firecracker sedum that has that blue tinge to it, like the one in the back. <laughs> Another wild, hu wild berry heucara. Sedum Atlantis, and I just moved my water bath here um, because it, it was like slanted, so I had to like prop it up with rocks and stuff, and then I just put it on top of the sedum because I didn't want to cut it off the grass um, from the sun. So there, I moved some Shasta daisies here, and I guess the bugs aren't over here, and so they survived, like barely, barely survived. But they did. Oh, and I'm gonna, right after this video, I'm gonna chop down this uh, cat's pajamas nepeta and it will come back in another two and a half weeks with new blooms. It smells so good. Once I cut it, it's gonna smell so nice. And then I also have to get rid of the grass that's here. Um, some more sedums in between. Oh, uh, wait, did I say, did I miss something? Oh yeah, I had a, I have echinacea there, echinacea here, and they match. They're both like really bright red. Um, I have another, what is this, uh, da, 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 butterfly bush. So slow, but so worth it later in the season. That's lemon love. That's another dianthus. This is the dwarf variety of the smoke bush. It's called velvetini. And I think, I think that's it. Oh my gosh, I actually named everything. Even the stuff that's dying, <laughs> stuff that I know is probably not gonna come back. Coco, relax, dude. He's like all up in there. 
this is a dog like in that backyard I know doing this in the sun is like cast a lot of shadows but you get the idea it's so I would say you know 90 percent of my plants are doing great and it's just that 10 percent issue and it's like bugs right mainly Oh yeah, the other thing I want to show you is that there's a bird's nest in here now. Um, but you can see them there. Yeah. This is a robin's nest. The robin's getting used to me. She hasn't, the mama, she hasn't tried to um, fly at my head anymore. So <laughs> she knows I'm not here to get her, her babies. Okay, that's all I have. <laughs> which is kind of a lot. I'm sure this was a very long video, but it's, I'm glad I did it. Um, it's good to see where I'm at at this time of year. And then I have the rest of the summer uh, to just sort things out and maintain. And I do maintain with like a little bit of stuff. Um, so I just bought some like sulfate iron for the iron deficiency I've been getting because of all this rain. I'll be putting that with some water and going by the hydrangeas to add iron. I also have um, sulfur pellets here, and that is also for my acid-loving plants to change the pH level. And what else? I use insecticidal soap. I try not to, but hey, when I get desperate and they're like basically killing the plant, I use it. I have the garden fungicide that I use for my phlox, a preventative, right? You put it on before you see white powdery mildew. It has to be beforehand. And I did buy the BTK, but I don't use it. Because I, it's for the worms, right? Um, and I just, yeah, I feel bad. The caterpillars, you know, like I'm like, uh, I feel bad for all of it, putting stuff down, but I spent a lot of money and I want it to last longer than three years, okay? <laughs> um, once it becomes a proper ecosystem where all beneficial insects will come to my garden because they haven't right i don't have any i don't have any except for the some of the bees and i i don't seem to have any um dragonflies hardly at all the birds seem to eat all the bird feed that my neighbor gives out instead of the bugs and i also don't have any ladybirds coming to eat the aphids and anything else that they eat that's beneficial so i <laughs> Maybe it's just too early, it's too soon, but I have to, I don't have the ecosystem yet, so I'm counterbalancing with, um, you know, all these store-bought methods, <laughs> but I don't want to eventually, okay? So yeah, it's looking great, and I do love this hat. It's humongous, and it's so far, it's not flopping, because that's, every time you buy one of these big hats, right, all it does is like, <laughs> but so far, it's hanging in there so we'll see how how long that lasts okay i'm gonna let you go because that must have been so annoying i'm so sorry if the like neighbors sawing or whatever was super annoying but i i got on a vibe and i i finished and i, I don't want to make another video so i'm so sorry but like that's what's happening okay <laughs> enjoy outside it's a beautiful day and i'm gonna change because it's like almost too hot for a t-shirt farewell